Hi, this is Dr. Michael Doherty with Performance Spine and Sports Medicine. Today's presentation topic is going to be a, about running assessments. We're going to talk about the anatomy, some common injuries, and also treatment strategies. Uh, a little bit about myself. I don't like to brag, but uh, the reason I tell you about myself is because I understand the nature of sport, I understand being a competitive athlete, and I understand uh, trying to get back sometimes a little bit uh, too soon uh, and, and re-injuring yourself. Uh, so I am uh, certified in a selective function, functional movement assessment. Um, active release technique, which we'll talk about later. I'm also McKenzie certified, grass and soft tissue certified. Um, some uh, athletic experience, I'm a multiple triathlon finisher with short and long uh, course experience. Um, I have participated in mixed martial arts and Muay Thai fighting, and also uh, current uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu uh, competitor and, and trainee. Um, so first we'll talk about the overuse injuries. And again, the overuse and, and structural injuries, I'll kind of delineate between the two, but of course we can have a combination of both. Um, you can have more than one thing at any given time, and you can have, uh, obviously, multiple things going on at any given time. So some common overuse injuries are uh, IT band syndrome, or the iliotibial band, uh, trochanteric bursitis, uh, patella tendonitis, and patellofemoral syndrome. Some uh, other uh, common overuse injuries are ischial bursitis, uh, Achilles tendonitis, posterior tibialis tendonitis, uh, anterior tibialis tendonitis, which are also known as uh, shin splints, uh, plica syndromes that affect the knee, and pes anserine bursitis. Now some structural injuries. Um, again, when we talk about structure, we're looking at uh, just the anatomy and through, the, uh, through the hips, knee, and ankle. So where you can have an anterior or ACL uh, uh, ligament or a posterior cruciate or, or PCL ligament uh, rupture, sprain, or tear. You can have the medial and lateral collateral ligaments, uh, again, a rupture, sprain, or tear, and you can have the medial and lateral meniscus, uh, usually uh, either a strain or a tear in that regard. Again, some other structural injuries. We can have uh, osteoarthritis in some of the major weight-bearing joints. Uh, the hip, the knee, and the ankle are the, uh, the most common. Also, we can have uh, the Achilles rupture, uh, tears, or other accumulated microtrauma. Um, a lot of these injuries, again, they could be uh, structural in terms of they can happen in one specific incident or they can be a result of, of overuse conditions. Um, some may require surgical inter intervention, but conservative treatment should always be considered first, um, especially when it comes to, uh, to some of the major joints. So basically, uh, we focus on the hips a lot. Uh, the, the, the title of this slide is The Hips Don't Lie. This is essentially the foundation of your gait. Uh, many people come in with ankle issues. Many people come in with knee issues. Um, and of course, many people, people come in with hip issues. But uh, what they don't often understand is that the ankle and the knee actually could be stemming from an imbalance or a weakness uh, in the hip. So again, some of the major players in the hip, we have trochanteric bursitis. Uh, we have piriformis syndrome, uh, ischial bursitis. Glute medius weakness, which is a big one, and of course, uh, the one that's pretty much everyone knows is the, the IT band syndrome. Um, so some of the relevant anatomy here, um, you can see the IT band that kind of runs down the lateral aspect of the, of the thigh is actually not a muscle. A lot of people seem to uh, uh, think that it's a muscle. It's actually a, a fascial connection. Uh, and we'll talk about fascia later, but essentially fascia is, is the saran wrap that wraps uh, around all of our muscles. Um, so it's a very taut, very fibrous uh, band that extends all the way up into the, uh, the glute medius muscle, down into the, actually the, uh, the anterior uh, portion of the, of the knee there. So with IT band syndrome, you can get a lot of, uh, a, a lot of different presentations in terms of uh, pain along that line. So we talk about treatment stra strategies. You're going to come in and see us. What do you expect uh, us to do? Um, well, we want to look at your gross movements. Why focus on solely one joint um, when we're not looking at the big picture, which is how do you move? If you're a runner, how do you run? If you're a, a triathlete or a cyclist, how do you ride a bike? What do you look like when you ride a bike? Where are some sticking points that, that we, can, uh, we can figure out? Um, the SFMA, or the Selective Functional Movement Assessment, is uh, basically broken up into 10 top tier assessments. We look at global movement and see where there's any deficiencies and then break out the, uh, the, the deficiencies uh, from there. Uh, we can also assess your current walking and running gait. We'll talk about how we do that. Um, of course, soft tissue dysfunction, if there's an issue in the IT band or the glutes, uh, how we can get that back online. And of course, we're going to mobilize restricted structures uh, when applicable. 
Some other treatment strategies, of course, we need a smart rehabil rehabilitative uh, exercise program, and that's more so for long-term care. Um, we want to retest the gross movement and your running gait, and we want to, uh, of course, remember the fascia. Because like I mentioned before, the fascia is the saran wrap, and we'll see kind of how the fascia can connect uh, multiple areas of the body. So the first way we would assess your running or walking gait is with our OptiGate uh, running assessment. Now the OptiGate is a state-of-the-art computer-based system that kind of watches uh, the way you move. There's different parameters that, that we can implement into the system to kind of focus on, on different, uh, different individuals. An athlete, for instance, may have a very different test than a, than a, a geriatric uh, or elderly uh, a woman. Um, it's a portable system, so we can put it basically on a treadmill. We can put it on a, uh, a flat surface, again, and change up the, uh, the surfaces as well to see kind of how you move based on, uh, based on the different surfaces. Um, it's both used to look at the gait, both walking and running, and of course, we're going to be able to assess and correct your, your biomechanical faults based on what we kind of find through the testing. Now again, the fascial system, I, uh, I mentioned this and I may, may beat this into the ground a little bit, but it's essentially the saran wrap that, that wraps us all together. Again, you can see, and most people don't often uh, understand these big white lines that they see on an anatomical chart, but this is the, the fascia. It, it covers multiple areas and it a lot of times is innervated with a lot of, uh, a lot of nerves that kind of tell us where we are in space. So issues with the fascia uh, can translate into issues kind of uh, uh, in multiple areas of the body. Um, again, the research is, is limited now, but starting to uh, become more comprehensive in terms of understanding, the, uh, understanding the, uh, the function. And again, just two quick examples are the IT band, which we talked about earlier, and then the thoracolumbar fascia, which is this big area here. So again, about the, uh, the, the assessments that we use. The SFMA has a top tier assessment, including large range of motion assessment over multiple joints. Basically, again, we have 10 different movements that we look at. Um, after that, we have breakouts that look, look at the dysfunctional patterns and how to correct those patterns. We're looking for, is the uh, dysfunction a mobility problem, which would require possible further uh, non-surgical orthopedic intervention, or is it a stability problem that may require just some simple exercises? Of course, after that, we're going to address it with corrective exercise and tissue mobilization, which should help restore function and movement. And uh, obviously with the SFMA, what we're looking for is your form. Uh, form follows function. So if, you're, if your running gait is thrown off, uh, we want to be able to assess you while you're running and kind of pick up those, uh, those bad areas. Active release technique is a, is a soft tissue uh, treatment. Uh, it's considered the, the gold standard, essentially, in soft tissue treatment. Um, it's trusted now by the Ironman brand racing, um, who only uh, hire active release uh, technicians to, uh, to kind of help with their, their races. Uh, essentially what it does, it breaks up adhesions in the muscles, and this can be due to scar tissue, overuse injury, or just accumulated microtrauma. When we talk about uh, any competitive athletes and, and accumulated microtrauma, uh, that's essentially the, the everyday uh, nicks and aches and, and, and pains that you kind of have. So uh, definitely very, very useful for, for, the, uh, for the weekend warriors and for the competitive athletes. Grassin technique, again, is another soft tissue technique. Uh, this uses uh, stainless steel tools to kind of do the same thing, to break down some fibrous tissue due to scarring, the accumulated microtrauma, and any kind of tissue adhesions. Uh, oftentimes in the body, there's multiple muscles that are crossing multiple joints at any given time. A lot of times, some of those muscles get stuck uh, when, we're, when they're trying to do uh, a couple different movements around a certain joint. So Graston's very good for extremity complaints, uh, your, your, your golfer's elbow, your tennis elbow, and some of the knee complaints as well. It's very good at getting into areas where sometimes the, the hands and the fingers cannot. Kinesiology taping, this was made popular of course in the Olympics and you see two pictures here of high level athletes using the kinesio tape. Uh, one for a, a javelin player uh, on the shoulder and another one from either a volleyball or a track athlete um, over the, uh, over the, the abdomen. Uh, essentially, there's many different brands of the kinesiology tape. Some work better than others. Um, basically, it offers support without a restriction in the range of motion. It's going to allow you to have some sort of support for muscles, especially if there's uh, something that's preceding an injury. Um, it's going to offer some proprioceptive awareness. Oftentimes, when we talk about the low back and that thoracolumbar fascia, we're looking at posture control and how the muscles react, uh, and the tape can kind of help, uh, at least in the, in the interim, uh, help kind of 
make the muscles work a little bit more efficiently. Um, there actually is some edema reduction that occurs with some of the tapes. You can use it on the sprained ankle or a sprained wrist and get some of the swelling and fluid out of there. And again, it reinforces proper movement. Um, some of the taping patterns, if, if, if done correctly, if applied correctly, can kind of help reinforce the postures that we want you to get in. So of course, nutritional strategies. This is a uh, most often time underlooked aspect of, of performance when we're talking about, again, just your, your, uh, your competitive runners or, or just your weekend warriors. Um, during your race day or, or your competition day, whatever it may be, you want to practice what you preach. Nutrition is, is essentially the fourth sport in, uh, in triathlon and probably the second sport in, uh, in, in, any, in anything else. So clinically, we want to, we want to use uh, smart supplementation to cover the foundations of health. Now, there's multiple ways to do this. Uh, there's multiple ways to look at what types of uh, deficiencies you may have uh, and then apply the nutrition from there. Um, so diet and sleep are also a core of recovery. Um, if we're not kind of hitting those two nails, then other things can fall apart, especially when we talk about uh, the race day management and, uh, and performance. Um, also inflammation, that's a popular catch term. We hear that uh, a lot. Is it good or is it bad? Well, obviously we want some sort of inflammation in the body. That's the body's natural way to get rid of bad things. Um, but there also can be uh, some bad inflammation. Um, spraining your ankle is an example of inflammation that we, we do want. Uh, the body's obviously trying to repair tissues, but chronic low-level inflammation um, is something that we don't want, and that can manifest itself as a lot of different things, uh, muscular pains, uh, general feelings of malaise or weakness. Um, again, things that we can assess and take a look at to kind of help you uh, kind of break through any plateaus and, and reach uh, true performance. So I put a couple slides on here about the uh, examples of basic fascial lines. Now some of the slides may get a little repetitive. Uh, however, we can see the, the, the connectedness essentially of, uh, of the body through, uh, through these fascial lines. Uh, these are cartoons, but these are actual uh, fascial lines that were dissected out of cadavers. They were able to uh, physically dissect these areas, uh, in some cases from head to toe, uh, in one, one straight shot. So this wasn't something that they kind of pieced together. These were actual uh, uh, lines that they could trace throughout the body. Uh, so some of the big ones are the, the front and back line. Again, you can see from the, the top of the scalp down to the, uh, the plantar fasciitis, um, or excuse me, the plantar fascia, uh, which could come in, 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 in hand uh, when we talk about issues like plantar fasciitis. Uh, the front line, again, right here, uh, uh, connects the basic bottom of the jaw down to the top of the feet. And we have a few more here, the sideline and spiral line. So essentially, you can see how some uh, areas of the body can be affected by some things that are not relatively close or not close anatomically. The arm line and deep line can give us uh, some of the referred pain or the radiating numbness, ting tingling, weakness that we get in the hands and arms sometime. Um, also breathing. Breathing is a very big, uh, uh, very big when it comes to lower back pain and neck pain. And we can have some fascial connections between some of the muscles of the lower back and neck and then the diaphragm as well. Spiral line, you can see there the connection between the, uh, the opposite sides of the body. So for instance, the left shoulder in this case here is connected all the way to the, to the uh, right hip. So things that are manifesting themselves as right shoulder pain or possibly, or excuse me, left shoulder pain or right hip pain could be uh, coming from uh, the opposite area of the body or vice versa. So that's, uh, that does it for our, our running assessment. Um, essentially, if you have any questions, please, current patient or future patient, please feel free to email me at uh, mdoherty at uh, njspineandsports.net. Um, should you have any questions uh, that I can't answer over email, um, feel free to call the front desk and make an appointment. Thank you.